पक्षी कॉन्सक्रेशन ऑफ द माथ इट्स स्कोप एंड आइडियल्स द स्वामी लेफ्ट लाहौर अटेंडेड बाय स्वामी सदानंदा हो हार्ड हरीड डाउन थिदर फ्रॉम अलमरा ऑन द रिसिप्ट ऑफ अवायर फ्रॉम हिम दे अराइव्ड एट द मोनेस्ट्री एट बेलूर ऑन अक्टूबर पद दिनिमिदि द स्वामीज अनएक्सपेक्टेड अपीरांस मेड हिज ब्रदर मंक्स एंड डिसाइपल्स वेरी हैप्पी बट देयर जॉय गिव प्लेस टू पेन वेन दे सो हाउ पेल एंड इल ही वाज अमन द मेंबर्स हु हार्ड जॉन्ड द मोनेस्ट्री बोथ बिफोर एंड ग्यूरिंग हिज एब्सेंस वर दोज हु लेटर बिकेम स्वामीज विमालनंदा बोधानंदा कालेनंदा एंड सोमानंदा द फॉर्मर टू हार्ड जॉन्ड वेन द माथ वाज एट आलंबजर एंड द लैटर एट नीलांबर मुखर्जीस गार्डन हाउस These with the other disciples had followed regular courses of study on the Vedas, Hindu theology, and even material science. Paramount, of course, were the worship of the Master and Arjo of meditation and devotion. Notwithstanding his fell in health, the Swami resumed his old life with the monks. आज वर्स पेंट इन रिलीजियस कॉन्वर्स एंड क्वेश्चन क्लासेस वर हेल्ड द स्क्रिप्चर्स वर रीड एंड को मेंटेड अपॉन एंड ही टुक अप सीरियसली द वर्क ऑफ ट्रेनिंग द मेंबर्स ही इंस्टीट्यूटेड रेग्युलेशंस एंड मोनेस्टिक डिसिप्लिन विद स्पिरिचुअल एंड इंटेलेक्चुअल वर्क फॉर सर्टन आर्ज ऑफ द डे ऑन द वेरी डे ऑफ हिज अराइवल ही थ्रिल्ड हिज ऑडिटर्स बाय रीडिंग With his characteristic eloquence and depth of feeling, the three poems composed by him in Kashmir, every word of the poems as uttered by him seemed ensouled with his own realizations. On the nineteenth and the twentieth, he performed the homa ceremony. The next three days were given over to the services and gatherings of the lay disciples of the order on the occasion of the great religious festival of Durgi Puja. On the twenty-fourth, the Swami Kiriyananda arrived from Almora. Everything was now being centered, as it were, in the monastery, and the devotional fervor of the Barnagore days seemed to shine forth anew. From November Okati, the Swami's movements alternated between the monastery and the residence of Balaram Babu in Bag Bazar. On the fifth of the month, he received at the Math, Mr. Rishibar Mukherjee, the Chief Justice, and Mr. Nilambar Mukherjee, the Prime Minister of Kashmir. On the following day, he had asked his guests there, the European disciples who had accompanied him to Kashmir and who had now returned to Calcutta after a tour of the historic cities in northern India. Three days after, on November Pannendu, the day preceding the Kali Puja, the Holy Mother, accompanied by a number of women devotees, visited the site of the permanent abode of the Rama Krishna Order. The monks were all present and had made elaborate arrangements for worship. The picture of the master worshipped in the math had been taken by them thither. The holy mother had also brought her own image of the master and with special worship she blessed the place. In the afternoon she with her party as also the swami with swami's brahmananda and sardananda. Written to Calcutta to perform at the request of the Swami next morning the opening ceremony of Sister Nivedita Gagar School in Bag Bazar. At the end of the worship of the Master by herself, the Holy Mother prayed that the blessing of the Great Mother of the Universe might be upon the school and that the girls it should train be ideal girls. And of this blessing, Sister Nivedita herself has written. I cannot imagine a grander omen than her blessing spoken over the educated Hindu womanhood of the future. From his first meeting with Sister Nivedita, the Swami had discussed with her at great length about the situation of Indian women and his plans for the education of Hindu girls. She was well known as an educator in England and had come to India expressly to be of service to Indian women. He had talked with her in an especial sense about his plans for the amelioration of the conditions of the women of his native land. It was understood during her stay both in Calcutta and Almora, and later during her wanderings with the Swami in Kashmir, that at the first opportunity she would open a girls' school in Calcutta. 
so asked to make some educational discovery which would be qualitatively true and universally applicable to the work of the modern education of Indian women at large. With this in mind, after touring in northern India with the group of her European companions, she decided to forget that she was European and came to live with the Holy Mother. Later, a separate house nearby was rented for her, but she spent her nights with the women devotees of the Holy Mother's household. The Swami went in Calcutta, saw her frequently and gave her additional insight into the Indian consciousness and into the nature of work she had assumed. This insight she has embodied in her book, The Web of Indian Love. At the Holy Mother's residence, she came in touch with several Orthodox women who were well versed in the epics, the dramas and the religion of Hinduism, and whose lives were examples of the value and realizations of Hinduism to their European guest. This was of a special advantage to her, and she herself lived the life of a Hindu Brahmacharini and soon became altogether Hinduist. This marks the beginning of Sister Nivedita's work in India. The Swami evinced the most interest in it at the time. He gave her perfect liberty in the elucidation of her ideas. She was to be free from collaborators, if she so chose above all, she might, if she so wished, give her work a definite religious color or even make it sectarian. But he added knowingly, you wish through a sect to rise beyond all sects. Eventually it should include all sects, not only within, but without the pale of Hinduism. The Swami once told her, if amidst their new tasks the Indian women of the future would only remember now and then to say Shiva. Shiva, it would be sufficient worship. In giving his idea of what a worker in the cause of womanhood should be, he once said to Sister Nivedita, Yes, you have faith, but you have not that burning enthusiasm that you need. You should be consuming energy. Then he blessed her and she became a consuming energy in its cause. Though the ceremony of consecration of the Ramakrishna Math took place on December Tomidi, the consecration of the newly bought Math Grange had been celebrated long ago, in one of the early days of March, Okaveyi Enimidi Vandala Tomhe Enimidi. On this latter occasion, the Swami himself performed all the sacred rites, helped by his Gurubhas and disciples on the new monastery Grange. The proceedings throughout were most impressive and inspiring. After making ablutions in the Ganga, the Swami put on a nude Kruya robe, entered the chapel and Saturday in meditation on the worshipper's seat. He then worshipped the relics of Sri Ramakrishna with great veneration, burying them under heaps of flowers and bilva leaves, and became again absorbed in deep meditation. Swami Pramananda and the other monks of the Brotherhood stood at the door watching him worship. After worship a procession was formed of the whole brotherhood which wended its way by the bank of the Ganga from Nilambar Mukherjee's garden house to the side of the new monastery laid by the Swami who carried on his right shoulder dharn containing the hallowed remains of Sri Ramakrishna. The sound of the blowing of conches and the beating of gongs resounded across the river. On the way the Swami said to a disciple, the Master once told me, T will go and live wheresoever, it will be your pleasure to take me, carrying me on your shoulders, be it under a tree or in the humblest cottage okati, with faith in that gracious promise, I myself am now carrying him to the side of our future math. Now for certain, my boy, that so long as his name inspires his followers with his ideals of purity, holiness and loving spirit of charity to all men, even so long shall he, the master, sanctify the place with his hallowed presence. When the math was in sight, the Swami spoke of the glorious future which he felt it was to have. It would be a center in which would be recognized and practiced a grand harmony of all creeds and faiths as exemplified in the life of Sri Ramakrishna 
and only ideas of religion in its universal aspect would be preached. And from this center of universal toleration would go forth the sign message of goodwill and peace and harmony to deluge the whole world he warned them of the danger of sex in time arising within its fold. Laying the sacred urn on the special seat spread on the math ground, the Swami and with him all the others prostrated themselves in fervent salutation before it. After the solemn puja rites he lit the sacrificial fire and performed the viraja homa, at which only the sannyasins of the order could be present. Having himself cooked the payasanna or sweetened mikrais with the help of his sannyasin brathe, he offered it to the master. This concluded the consecration ceremony. The Swami then addressed the congregation as follows, Do you all, my brothers, pray to the Lord with all your heart and soul that He, the Divine Incarnation of the Age, may bless this place with His hallowed presence for ever and ever, and make it a unique center, a punyakshatra, of harmony of all the different religions and sects, for the good of the many, for the happiness of the many. All with folded palms responded to the call by joining in the prayer to the Lord. Then the written procession formed, Sarat Chandra, the Swami's disciple, Karin, at the injunction of his Guru, the sacred urn on his head. This particular day was a red letter day in the history of the Ramakrishna order. The very atmosphere vibrated with spirituality. The Swami was jubilant, ecstatic. Now, he felt was accomplished the tremendous task of finding a permanent place and sufficient means to build a temple for the Master with a monastery for his Gurubhas and the future generations as the headquarters of the order for the perpetuation and propagation of his Master's teachings. He said, by the will of the Lord is established today his Dharmakshatra. Today I feel free from the weight of the responsibility which I have carried with me for twelve long years. And now a vision comes to my mind. This math shall become a great center of learning and sadhan. Pious householders will erect houses for themselves on the grounds round this future religious university and live there with the sannyasins in the center. To the south, the followers of the Lord from England and America will come and make their reward. Turning to a disciple, he asked triumphantly, What do you think of it? The disciple having reverently expressed his doubt if this most excellent piece of fancy would ever be materialized, the Swami cried out, Fancy, do you say? Hear me, O you of little faith! Time will fulfill all my expectations. I am now only laying the foundation, as it were. Great things will come later on. I will do my share of the task and I shall instill into you all the various ideas which you will in the future have to work out. The highest principles and ideals of religion have not only to be studied and comprehended, but brought into the practical feed of life. Do you understand? A few days later, the same disciple had the privilege of hearing some of the Swami's ideas of the scope and ideals of the math and the regulations and disciplines which he wished to be observed there in the future. These have been recorded by the disciple from which the following extracts will be found most suggestive and illuminating as they outline the Swami's schemes of national education and of philanthropic work in his own country. As he was walking to and fro on the grounds of the new math he said, pointing to an old cottage. There will be the place for the Sdhus to live in. This math will be the central institution for the practice of religion and the culture of knowledge. The spiritual force emanating from here will permit the whole world, turning the currents of men's activities and aspirations into new channels. From here will be disseminated ideals harmonizing jnana, bhakti, yoga and karma. 
द टाइम विल कम डब्ल्यू सी इन बाई द मेयर विल ऑफ द सानी सिंस ऑफ दिस माथ लाइफ विल वार ब्रिट इन टू द डेड एंड सोल्स ऑफ मेन ऑल दीज विजन्स आर राइज इन बिफोर मी ओन दाट लान टू द साथ विल बी द टेम्पल ऑफ लर्निंग मॉडर्ड आफ्टर द मानर ऑफ आर इन सेंट टर्स इन इट विल बी टोट ग्रामर फिलोसफी आर्ट्स साइंस लिटरेचर रेटोरिक हिंदू कोड्ज ऑफ लो स्क्रिप्चर्स एंड इंग्लिस देर द एन ब्रह्मक्रिस विल लिव एंड स्टडी द सेस्थ्रास द माथ विल प्रोवाइड देम विथ फूड क्लोदिंग एट्सेट्रा After five years training these brahmacharis will be at liberty to return to their homes and lead the householder life or if they prefer they may take the vow of sanyasa with the sanction of the superiors of the math if any of these brahmacharis are found to be disorderly or of bad character the math authorities will have the power to turn them out here boss will be taught irrespective of caste or creed But those who would like to observe the orthodox customs of their respective castes and creeds will have to separately arrange for their food and so forth. They will attend the classes only in common with the rest. The authorities shall keep a strict watch on their character too. No one will be entitled to admission into the monastic order who has not received his training here. Thus in course of time the math work will be conducted wholly with a personnel drawn from them disciple then sir you don't mean to reintroduce the old gurukula system in the country swami ji why assuredly yes there is no scope whatever in the modern system of education for the unfoldment of the brahma vidya the old institution of brahmacharya must be established anew but its foundation must be laid on a broad basis and many changes and modifications suited to the needs of the times will have to be introduced into it of which i shall tell you later on that plot of land adjoining ours in the south should be acquired in time there will be the nasatra or a feeding home of the math in the name of sri ramakrishna where proper arrangements will be made for serving food to those who are really poor and needy regarding them as forms of narayana the scope of its work will be regulated according to the funds at its disposal it may even be started with two or three people Enthusiastic brahmacharis will have to be trained to conduct this anna satra they then self should find means for its support even by begging from the to door the math will not be allowed to lend any pecuniary aid to when the brahmacharis have completed their 5 years training in this home of service in that way then only they will have the right of admission into the temple of learning branch of the monastery Thus after 10 years of training in all they will be entitled to enter the sanyasa asratna after due initiation by the math authorities of course if they have a mind to become sanyasis and if the latter find them fit for it but the president of the math may in the case of some specially gifted brahmachari waive this rule and give sanyasa at any time in spite of this rule You see I have all these ideas in my head disciple sir what is the object of establishing these three separate branches in the math swami ji don't you see there should be first anadna or the giving of food and other necessaries of physical life next vidyadana or the imparting of intellectual knowledge and last of all jnana dana or the conferring of spiritual knowledge the harmonious in of these three aspects which condosu the making of man must be the sole duty of the mat by devoting themselves to the work of the anna satra in the manner indicated the idea of working for others by practical means and that of serving humanity in the spirit of worship will be firmly implanted in the mind of the brahmacharis this will gradually purify their mind leading to the development of sittvi thoughts and aspirations and such alan are capable of receiving and retaining the apra and the para vidya 
the secular and the supreme knowledge and thus become eligible for sanyasa. Disciple, Sir, your words encourage me to learn something more of your ideas about the Nasatras and Sevasramas. Swamiji, there should be well-ventilated rooms in these homes, in each of which two or three of the poor or the diseased would live. They should have comfortable bedding and clean clothes. There should be a doctor for them who would come and seek them once or twice a week or as often as convenient. The Sevasrama will be a department of the Nasatra in which the diseased will be nursed and well taken care of. In time, as funds permit, a big kitchen will be built and any number of hungry people will be fed at all times of the day to their hearts contain. None shall be refused under any circumstances. The gruel strand of from the cooked rice draining into the Ganga will turn its water white. Oh, how glad at heart I shall be to see an Anna Satra working on such a grand scale here. Speaking thus the Swami stood for a while gazing dreamily at the Ganga, as if fathoming the future to see that day. He broke his reverie by saying affectionately to the disciple, Who knows when the sleeping lion will be aroused in one or other of you? If the mother but kindles in the soul of any one of you a spark of her divine power, hundreds of such anasatras will be opened all over the country. Know this that jana, bhakti and sakti are already in every living being. It is only the difference in the degree of their manifestation that makes one great or small. It is as if a curtain were drawn between us and that perfection. When that is removed, the whole of nature is at our feet. Then, whatever we want, whatever we will, will come to pass. If the Lord wills, we shall make this math a great center of harmony. Our Lord is the visible embodiment of the perfect harmony of all ideals. His throne will remain unsecond in the world of spirituality if we keep alive that ideal of harmony here. We must seek to it that people of all sects and creeds from the Brahmana down to the Chandala will find on coming here their respective ideals manifested. The other day when we installed the image of Sri Ramakrishna on the ground of this math, I saw his ideas emanating from here flooding the whole universe with their radiance. I for one am doing and shall do my best to elucidate his broad ideas to all people, you all also do the same. What avails the mere reading of Vedanta? We have to exemplify the truth of the pure Advat in practical life. This Advatavada has so long been kept hidden in the forests and mountain caves. It has been given to me to bring it out from seclusion and scatter it broadcast before the Varkade world and society. The sound of the Advat drum must resound in every hearth and home, in meadows and groves, over hills and plains. Come all of you to my assistance and set yourselves to work. Disciple, but, sir, my mind inclines rather to realize the Advat state through meditation than to manifest it in action. Swami G. Y. What is the use of remaining always stupefied in Jadasmadhi? Under the inspiration of Advat Y, note sometimes dance like Shiva and sometimes remain immersed in superconsciousness. Who enjoys a delicacy more, he who eats it all by himself, or he who serves it with others? Granted that by realizing the Atman in meditation you attain Mukti, vote of that to the world. W.C. How to take the whole universe with us to Mukti? W.C. Sal set a conflagration in Mahamaya's dominion. Then only you will be established in the eternal truth. Oh, what can compare with that bliss immeasurable, infinite as the skies? In that state you will be speechless, carried beyond yourself, by seeing your own self in every being that breathes, and in every atom of the universe. 
When you realize this, you cannot live in this world without treating everyone with exceeding love and compassion. This is indeed practical Vedanta. The great ceremony narrated above was only that of the consecration of the place. The grounds were as yet not in order, the old buildings, previously used as the residential quarters of a boat building center, were undergoing considerable additions and alterations, and consequently, were not as yet ready for habitation. Under the Swami's orders, the building was begun in April Okaveyi Enimidi Vandala Tombhe Enimidi, and though it was pushed through with all haste, it was not completed till the beginning of the following year. An entire upper story with a veranda facing the Ganga had to be built, and at the same time, the building which contains the refectory of the monks and the chapel of Sri Ramakrishna had to be constructed. It was not until January Rindu, Okaveyi Enimidi Vandala Tombhe Tommidi, that the math was finally removed from Nilambar Mukherjee's garden house to what is now called the Belur Math, although on December Tommidi, Okaveyi Enimidi Vandala Tombhe Enimidi, the installation ceremony of the image of Sri Ramakrishna had been celebrated in the new monastery and the Swami and several monks lived there from that time on 